<laughs> and number three is... Oh man, I got tricked. Hi, I'm Tracy Gardner and welcome to Pairing Base. This video is part of a series of videos where we're trying to find out which wines taste most amazing with steamed lobster with lemon and butter. In this particular session, we taste tons of wines to try to find out which ones are best. Specifically, what we do here is we take a bite of the food the way you're likely to eat it. We then take a sip of wine, but then we take a really close look at what happens in your mouth. That's how we evaluate the pairing, and that's how we see which ones are the best. So, let's get into it and see what happens. We're going to get started here with our tasting session, and my guest today is Irene. Hello, uh, I'm currently the beverage director at Lincoln Ristorante. Uh, and I've actually spent most of my career working in restaurants, both in front of the and back of the house capacities. Uh, I've cooked for several years and then worked several years on the floor. And I think that gives me sort of a unique perspective on, on how to pair food and wine. Well, that wasn't great. That was perfect, I thought. Give that taste, see what happens. Like you mentioned, we're going to take a bite of the food the way we think most people eat this food, which is a nice squeeze of lemon, a dip of butter. We usually pause here when we recognize how delicious this dish is, because it's really tasty, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. Give the wine taste. For me, I like the I like the minerality of the wine. I think that it's got this very sort of clean, mineral-driven finish that I think works really nicely with um, the sweet lobster flesh here, mm -hmm. um, and it's got some nice acidity to kind of cut through mm -hmm. um, cut through the richness. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure that it adds too much dimension to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's not the most interesting pairing, but it is. I mean, it, it tastes you know they they taste sort of well well suited. Mm -hmm. Um, right. I don't think it's really, really elevating mm -hmm. anything. Right. I like it. I like because there's a nice fruit dimension to this. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit more ripeness than there was in the first wine, but mm -hmm. it's still sort of citrus, but more in sort of like an orangish kind of um, note. It's got nice acidity. I wish it was maybe a little bit brighter, mm -hmm. a little fresher to kind of um, cut the richness of the butter because mm -hmm. I still do have sort of a, a, a very kind of rich feeling in my mouth. I would mm -hmm. like something that, that where the acidity was a little bit higher just to kind of refresh the palate a mm -hmm. little a little better. Um, I, 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 you know, I get it like a touch of oak there. I do think it's not too much and I do think um, that, that, um, that, you know, that delicate note um, kind of works with, with the butter here. Mm -hmm. The impression this pairing gives me is richness. Um, and I think, you know, in some cases you sort of get acid and brightness or richness, but I really get the impression of richness. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's some weight there that's pretty nice. Um, and I do get that, um, <clears throat> that, that citrus, a little more complex citrus experience, which I think is an interesting compliment to the lobster. Is it bad if I say I like it? <laughs> uh, it's not bad if you say you like it. Okay. Again, I get, you know, I get maybe a hint of, of oak here still, mm -hmm. but it's, it's very subtle, it's very well integrated. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think it's a nice compliment. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm inclined to give this guy a half. It's, it's super clean. Yeah. It, it really refreshes your mouth. Um, um, but I, I don't get it, for me, I don't get it adding a lot mm -hmm, mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. For me, there's too much, um, mm -hmm. there's too much oak in this, mm -hmm. uh, and it really overpowers everything because the flavors, you know, with the lobster are fairly subtle. Mm -hmm. This is just, um, it's a bit, there's too much oak here, mm -hmm. um, and, there's, and it's very fat. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's not a, it's not a, a sip that makes you want to take another sip. Right. It doesn't refresh the palate. Right, right. Yeah, it's right. A, a bit fatiguing, I think, right. for the palate. Right, right, right. And also, also not, it doesn't give you. I sometimes talk about the fruit treat, like you know that that thing you're left with after a sip of the wine. Oh, I never heard that. Uh, well, that's a new thing. Okay. <laughs> but you know, you want you want the pairing like to it. reward you, right? Yeah. You want there to be a, a treat that, yeah. that appears in your mouth. Um, and this, <laughs> this gives you a treat, but you, it's not the treat you want. Well, I think this wine has a bit too much character for, for the dish. Um, um, it's quite delicious on its own. I can't read Irene's mind, but what I wrote on my notepad was too much. Mm. <laughs> it's just, it just, it comes in and steals the show. 
Yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah. It doesn't share the stage with the yeah. dish. <clears throat> it doesn't try to like find a place within the context of the lobster, or lemon, and the butter. It just like comes in there and it's just too much. <clears throat> Not quite. Now, now uh, l let me know what you think about this. It's kind of tricky because the acid is great. Mm -hmm. um, but I get the sense that there's, there's something blocking the experience. Like, you know, where you, you kind of wait for the experience to unfold. The oak? It could be oak. Yeah, but I get, I get, I get this distinct feeling that something's just blocking anything else from happening. Uh, it's, so some of the other ones we tasted had great lemon. Mm -hmm. And the, the lemon, <coughs> the lemon just kind of rode out the experience. Uh, this one, like, just if something stops the experience from developing. I'm looking at you out of the corner of my eye, and I don't see you jumping up and down with excitement because <laughs> you're not. Well, I think it's a little bit more of the same with there's. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I mean, the wine itself has just too much character, mm -hmm. um, and I also think that it doesn't have quite enough weight mm -hmm. um, to stand up to mm -hmm. the to the richness of this dish. It gets it gets a mm -hmm. at the finish it gets lost. Like it, mm -hmm. it it shows a lot of flavor at the start, but the finish it 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 mm -hmm. it's just not quite there. <clears throat> right, I agree. A lot of these wines sort of you know get in the door with their acid. Mm -hmm. and this has good acid, mm -hmm. uh, but then it makes a mistake that. Um, uh, I think number five made of just bringing too much fruit and the wrong fruit. I'm trying to see which one we like best of, of all these guys. Sort of final, <coughs> final contest. For me, weight-wise, it's good. Mm -hmm. Acidity, minerality, all mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. um, but there's not. It's not adding. Right. It's not really adding right. too much. Right. Yeah. Um, I could drink this with it with the dish. I'd want. I'd want to search for better, but I could drink this with the dish. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, yeah, but it's, it's, it's like, I agree with you, it's kind of borderline, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> it sort of it ekes across the finish line. I still like it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yep. why, why do you like it? I just, it has, um, I just like this fruit character that it adds. Mm -hmm. um, I think I mentioned like orange before. Mm -hmm. There's, um, there's sort of like a lazy character to the wine that adds some texture that I think works nicely in terms of weight with this. And I, I still like, I still think it needs a touch more acidity, but mm -hmm. I, I, I think mm -hmm. it's, I think it's a really nice compliment. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I think I might have said this before. Uh, I like it, um, but I, I find the, the wines we like fall into two different camps, either, you know, acidic and bright yeah. or kind of rich. Yeah. Uh, yeah maybe luxurious, maybe, uh, maybe. Yeah, just sort of rich. And this falls into the rich category mm -hmm, to mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. The dish is rich, and mm -hmm. you might want to have something that is, is sort of mouth feeling, mm -hmm. mouth, mouth filling, mm -hmm. uh, to give you that rich feeling. So I, I think that's, I, I, I get that. Yeah, I still like it. I still like it. Uh, of the three, where do you put it in the lineup? One, two, and three. I think I put it number, it's either two or three. Yeah. Um, What's number one? Number one is number two. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. And number th number three, like it's got this little bit of oak on it that I think mm -hmm. works really nicely with this mm -hmm. dish. But it falls, it, 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 like, and the acidity is nice and the minerality is nice, but there's there's something that falls it falls a little bit short. Mm -hmm. It kind of it, it had a little bit of that mineral thing that stopped me from from loving it. You don't think the mineral works with them? Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. Um, Irene likes minerality mm -hmm. a little bit more than I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, and so I usually think personal preference doesn't come into play a lot of times, but maybe at the very end, you know, because mm -hmm. we've, we've, you know, we've taken a ton of wines through this filter and we've got to a few, uh, and that's where you might say, I'm going to serve two bottles, uh, one for people that love minerality mm -hmm. and one for people that, you know, don't mm -hmm. care one way or another mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So number two is the one we like best. Let's see what it is. Let's see. The most exciting yeah. part. The big and reveal. The winner is, is. Oh my goodness. It is. <laughs> the winner is yes. a uh, Chenin Blanc. Yep. Uh, this is one where I, I told a story about um, how I collected information about which pairings to taste. Uh, so I, I went to a bunch of wine stores and asked for the be very best food and wine pairing for. Uh, this dish, steamed lobster with lemon and butter, and got tons of different ideas. I went to the internet and said, you know, best wine for steamed lobster, lemon and butter. Uh, and I asked people who other people ask, sort of mavens when it comes to food and wine pairing, what they thought was best. 
Uh, and no one mentioned Shannon Block except a, an article on the internet that said they talked to a guy who owns a wine store in Maine. And that guy said, hands down, Shannon Block is what you want. Uh, and based on that, we bought probably, you know, maybe nine or ten different Shannon Blancs, gave them a taste with a dish. Uh, and um, here we are. So Francois Chaudin, Amon Louis, yep. and um, what's the, Le so Bournet is, is the yes. vineyard, yeah. They, um, they have a ton of different bottlings. In fact, they have a really great back label because their back label tells you which of their bottlings are dry, which are half dry or medium sweet, and which ones are sweet. And it's very helpful to decide which one to get. So again, number two was our number one favorite. This uh, is a wine where someone in the wine store you know, sort of thought about, this, this is not a typical pairing idea. No. Uh, this is one where the person in the wine store thought about the dish, and thought about the, um, the pairings. Uh, I thought about the wine she had in the store and she thought That's that this would be a really great experience. I think we tasted it before and it had too much fruit. Yeah, um, but this, but this time, time I like the yeah, fruit. Yeah. I like the, citru the citrusy note. Yeah. Um, huh. This is a, a Pinot Blanc, a, P a German Pinot Blanc. <laughs> and number three is... Oh man, I got tricked. Chablis. Ah. <laughs> and number three is... Oh man, I got tricked. Chablis. Ah. This was a recommendation um, where the person in the wine store said this wine would give you lemon and, and acid, but nothing else. Uh, is it it's just straight Chablis or is oh, it... Oh yeah, uh, it's, it's just it's straight Chablis. The, okay. So there's no oak on this. I think uh, it's should, I, don't, I don't think it is. I think when we tasted this before, it was just super duper clean. These are the three that we like best. Uh, number, our favorite was the um, Chenin Blanc. And did we decide we had a two-way tie or it was... For me, it's sort of even. Okay, a we, we have a two-way tie. Um, uh, again, again, which would make, it, yeah. it would make an interesting dinner party conversation yeah. Yeah. Uh, of the um, Pinot Blanc and the Chablis, the specific Chablis. We have very strong reactions, negative reactions, to the other wines. Let's open those up and see what they are. A, oh, the Mount Eden. Yes, the yeah. California-style Chardonnay. Chardonnay. Uh, we both said the oak was just too much in that wine. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. a mouthful of oak. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's that for number four. Okay, number five. We didn't like it all. We, Sancerre. Sancerre. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. We said... It's too much, too much flavor. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> I only had two yeah. things to say about this. Yeah. I said too much. Yeah. Number six, I thought something blocked it, and this was... Oh, this is the Marceau. The Marceau, uh-huh. The moment where the pairing happens, after, by, you know, after a sip of wine, um, it's, it didn't develop, it yeah. stopped. Yeah. And I think the oak yeah. made, made yeah. it stop. You might know what number seven is, and as you suggested, a very high quality Riesling, but a Riesling. Well, it's a, I mean, it's a super aromatic grape variety. Yeah. Like the acidity level's perfect. Right. The aromas themselves are a bit too right. sweet for, for this. Right, and that's, that's why I said it. the acid was great, but too much. And, and uh, you also mentioned you thought it was thin. So it didn't have the body that a lot of these other wines had. We've tasted tons of wines with this dish to try to find out which wines you might want to serve when you're serving steamed lobster with lemon and butter. We tasted wines that our tasters like best. We tasted wines that Irene and I like best. And we tasted all those wines together blind to tell you which wines we thought were fantastic. So we hope that you'll take our recommendations and or give us some great feedback on those recommendations because anyway, we think you'll have a fantastic food and wine pairing experience. In the future, we're gonna be doing tons of dishes, the dishes you're eating all the time, and we're gonna to try to find the wines that make that dish even better. So please come back to our channel, subscribe and like it, and we'll see you soon. Watch the next video if you wanna find out what to ask for in the wine store, assuming you can't find the specific wines we recommended. That's what we cover. There's some great information there, and I think you really like it. So check it out.